Hey, good morning, everyone. Hello. Thursday morning, I thought I'd jump on and paint some pumpkins with you all. How is everybody today? Well, I'm so glad you're popping in. Say hello when you pop in. Um, I've been painting pumpkins lately because it seems like I was just on my porch here talking about summer and how I'm really enjoying summer painting, but it really is starting to be fall now, and uh, we're all doing the the pumpkins and the fall things. Hey, Deb, thanks for popping on. So I love all the holidays. I love Halloween. It's one of my favorites. It is nice. I am in Maine today. I'm here till the end of October, so I will get some of that wonderful um, foliage that we get up here. So hey, Cindy, thanks for watching. I've been painting pumpkins in my um, art membership. I've been painting pumpkins for myself and all the fall things. So I thought I'd come on and give you guys some little tips on, on how easily to paint pumpkins of different colors and whatnot. Hi, Deb. Um, hey, Selena. And remember, this is always recorded and on my page. Usually I'll put it up on YouTube as well. So please follow me in all of the uh, socials and you can uh, not try to remember everything I did this morning. You can see the recording. Hey, Deb. Thank you guys. Um, say good morning. Please let me know you're here. Let me know where you're watching from. That's always fun for me. You know, I'm usually on on Mondays uh, with my Tinker's Cart Art and my Craft Around the Clock segment, but I wanted to pop on this morning. I had a little extra time, and we've been, like I said, painting pumpkins. I'm using acrylics, and I just have out basic colors. I like to use the primaries and have you mix colors when you can. If you have all the colors, please feel free to use them, whatever brand, whatever you like. But I do want you to know you don't need to buy all of the colors. You can mix many colors from your... Um, primaries. Oh, Selene, fall leaves. Yes, I've got some fun projects uh, in the works here, which I'll kind of show you as we go along. This is a painting that I did last year. I was going to put it in the art membership. I did not. I may do it this year. It was really fun. It was from a reference photo of pumpkins from the top down. I love all the little gourds and pumpkins. Good morning, Lisa. You know, those really bumpy ones are so cool and they can be in any color, many colors naturally. Any color for your imagination. This painting we just did in my art membership um, on Monday. So this was very pastel -y, but still a little bit of oranges, some, some little bit of teal blue hues, which you'll find in pumpkins. I really wanted to paint pink pumpkins. You know, it seems to be the pink phase with uh, Barbie and all the things, but it turned into more pastel. Um, so anyways, let me jump in and show you. I'm gonna put my painting here uh, for a reference. But let me know what you think of this. I didn't know if it was appealing, if people wanted this in, in the membership or for a class. But let me know what you think. I would love some feedback. I've been sitting on that since last fall. And like I said, I just have out my basic colors. I've got a, a, a cadmium or primary yellow. I do love my phthalo green and phthalo blue. Phthalo green is a very blue green, and you can make all kinds of beautiful greens with it. Little Payne's gray, white, uh, some red, and burnt umber. You can really mix, like I said, many, many colors. And I'm probably gonna mix my own oranges as we go. And I probably need a little more yellow for that. But really do pull out the colors that you have, whatever you might have. I may just add a, add a few oranges here from my, um, my paints as well. Oh, and you know what I do wanna pull out? Maybe some burnt sienna, although you just mix that red with some burnt umber and you get a beautiful burnt sienna. So we will kind of start playing around. Hey, Debbie. Um, Selena, you like that painting for the pumpkins? I do have an art membership, uh, two of them. One is a recorded painting sent to you once a month. Once we paint uh, together four times a month, two recordings, two live. Um, if you send me a message or put in the comments, I can give you information about that. But I was thinking of offering some of these classes as just a one-off class for sale on my website. I have a few there. I haven't really done much of that, but that might be a thought too. So really, do give me feedback, you guys, on what you wanna paint, how you wanna paint it, all those things. So anyways, okay. I've sketched a few pumpkins out. Very simple to sketch a pumpkin. Let me do it on the back here with a Sharpie so you can maybe, let's see, will a Sharpie go through? Just so you can see how simple you, you it's great for reference photos and things too. Um, take pictures of pumpkins wherever you go and you'll have um, in, uh, inspiration. You could certainly print those out. You could print them out in black and white, say, and trace them if you wanted. But pumpkins are super easy. If you want to just sort of get a circle going, an oval really, and then you just start dividing. And really, how simple is that? You get a pumpkin, you can put a little stem. I love the stems, wait till we paint the stems. Those are so fun. Um, simple, you can 
uh, do it a little differently for different things. You know how the pumpkin, some of them are kind of flat like that. Same, same thing. Just make your shape and put your little um, lines down, the little grooves and your little stem. Now I would, you know, make your little rounded bits a little like that and you'll get more of a pumpkin shape. Like here, I would probably round that off a little bit. If I wanted a pumpkin that you could see some of the backside, you can just put a little few bumps up here. Easy peasy, you guys, so easy. But you can always trace your photos for inspiration too. If you ever see me painting online and there's something that you want a tracer for, I'm happy to make it as well. These are simple, you can draw these. But if I'm doing anything a little more complicated, I always offer, um, if you just comment or send me a message, I'll get you the tracer for that. Um, so let me just dig in. Well, I've got a few here because I wanted to show you basic, basic, simple technique, but you could do it in different colors. So let's see. Can you see? If you can't see what I am painting, I know it's upside down for you when I do this kind of live format on Facebook, but um, do let me know if I sort of pull it out of, out of your view. Let's just paint a typical orange one first. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for watching. Let's do this guy as a just a simple regular orange pumpkin and then we can start doing different colored ones. I start by putting my dark lines in my dark shadows in. Shadows and highlights are what are going to make the pumpkin look rounded. Values, darks and lights and I will show you how I get those in there. Working in acrylics you work a little quick because the paint dries faster. You could use mediums to slow your drying time down or you could work fast. I try to work fast so that I can mix. And then you can layer, it dries so quick you can layer on top of that and on top of that. Sometimes I'll use a wash to put my shadows in, um, but a lot of times I just mix wet and wet. So I'm going to mix up a dark color for those crevices. So it's going to be, I'm going to take a little lizard and crimson, maybe some burnt umber. Um, I want a little bit of a, a maroony colored for those darks. I make beautiful maroons just with my reds and blacks. I usually can't find a deep enough maroon. Um, but I have a nice alizarin here, so with a little of my paints gray or even blue. What I do, just a little tip, I have my colors on my palette. I usually will limit my colors. I don't want to be all over the place. Your painting will be a little disjointed and hard hard to follow. I like to have a more cohesive painting, and I can do that a lot of times by picking out a color palette to begin with and sticking to it. So I'm going to use the colors that are on my palette. They're pretty earthy tones, but we'll still get those. Um, we can still get those pastel -y looking pumpkins with these same colors or that blue, uh, greeny blue squash pumpkin, same colors. I am just grabbing different colors a lot of times without even thinking and mixing a little bit and seeing, does that work? That will keep your painting cohesive because you're just grabbing colors that are here, mixing them in different ways. Sometimes if you want, sit down with your paints, put a little dab out, mix, 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 see what you come up with swatch on a piece of paper, write what you mixed, you'll be surprised at how many colors you can get with a few colors, which makes it very easy and simple. You're not overwhelmed by all of the shades of orange and all of the different yellow shades. You're mixing them from what you have and your, your, your brain will retain some of that. You'll almost naturally go and dip into colors and I would do it. I'll dip into a few colors and think, oh, that's too dull or that won't work, but now I know and I try it on my palette first. So, so I've got a dark here going and I'm going to simply go into my lines, the little uh, indentations between the little rounded bits. And if it's a really big pumpkin, there's a lot of detail, I would maybe start a little thinner, get a little thicker and then get a little thinner again. Not really important in most of the little pumpkins that you're painting. So I'm going to go right around and get those lines in first. I don't want them to end up looking like perfect line. So I may just dry off my brush a little bit before it dries. Maybe I'll smudge it out a bit. Now, just think about it. I'm looking at the pumpkin straight on. Where's the shadow being cast? This bump in the front is closest to us, biggest. It's casting a shadow on these two little side bits. So I'm keep keeping more of a harsh line here, but I'm blending it, softening it here where the shadow is. Same with these guys. And this is just going to help me Smudge that paint after so it doesn't look like harsh lines. So there you go. That's all I start with. And I may want a little shadow around the stem. So the stem's going to be here. I might do a little shadow there. I have just a tiny bit of paint on my brush. I'm just sort of smudging it there. I'm not painting a perfect line. I'm just smudging it. Same on the bottom. It would be a little bit of a shadow. Think of the pumpkin sitting on a flat surface. The bump is coming out. It's a little bit of a shadow coming up there. 
So this is where I'll start. And now I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm not going to wash it in water. I want my paint to stay at a pretty heavy consistency. And we know our acrylics sometimes are a little transparent. Unless I'm going into a much lighter color, then I'll wash my brush and dry it well. Or keep a spare brush nearby that I can quickly grab. But now I'm going to go into my oranges. So I'm just simply going to take some red, red and yellow, mix that up, and start getting some orange shades. So you can see I grabbed my... Um, one of my craft acrylic paints in orange just to grab because you know sometimes I panic and say oh will I get the color I want but look there I am there's the orange I picked from the craft paints there's the orange I just mixed with red and yellow so you don't need all the colors you just can do it with your primaries and I'm going to just start stroking in some orange here and I'm going to think about what do I want lighter and what do I want darker I want it to be a light light orange and I'll probably go back and highlight after with maybe a white or a very light yellow. But where would that be, right? Where would that be if we were painting that? So as I'm painting, I'm thinking about my darks are in here. And I'm also in going through my mind right now is that's just maybe not dark enough in those creases. So I can always go back. But light is going to be on the edges of this front section on both edges. Because that's where it's the light's hitting it and a little bit in the middle. And Usually the tops of the pumpkins I'll give a little light highlight to. Something like this here is going to be up against a shadow, so this will be highlighted here. So I'm sort of thinking about that in my head as I'm going along. I want to make my painting interesting. I don't want to just put a shadow in orange and then a highlight. Throw in some colors. You could throw little bits of green in there. You could throw little bits of purple, different colors if you wanted to, because if you think about it, our brains sort of take over sometimes. Like if you're painting from a real pumpkin, you put a real still life in front of you, or you're out in the field in plein air painting, um, you've got the real item. In your, If you let your brain take over, it's gonna say, oh, there's a pumpkin, it's orange, and you're gonna to have to paint it orange. So don't look at it as a pumpkin, look at it, even if you have to put it through a viewfinder and say, oh, you know what, there's that little bit of color. I see, I see a green reflection there. Oh, I see a little blue that might be coming off the sky. Don't think of it a pumpkin because you'll end up with orange ball and a green stem. You want to really look and even embellish. I will put colors where they don't belong if I feel like it and if I like the look of it. So there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Okay, I'm taking just yellow on my brush now. I've wiped the orange off. I've got a dirty brush with a little orange stuck in there still going right into my yellow. And now I'm going to use that in some of the areas where I know I want to get a little lighter. And what my purpose is, now, what I want to do now is really just cover the white of the canvas. I just want to get that white covered up and then I can really start having fun adding a little more darks, a little more lights, whatever I want. And you can, let me see, you can see that. I want to make sure you can see. I'm not going into the white just yet. I want to build up darkish to light so that when I get to my light, they'll really pop. If I don't have some dull dark in the back, as bright as I want the painting to be, I won't be able to get those colors to pop like I'd like. And I'm starting to think a little bit about the shape. I know I want it a little bit rounder down here. And I'm just painting a floating pumpkin here. If you're painting a whole scene, you will later on come and give a shadow underneath so it's really sitting. But we're just getting some of those pumpkin colors in there now. And it is translucent a little bit. I can see my paper through. But as it dries, I'm going to be able to build up the color. And I love to have brush strokes showing, heavy paint, um, a little abstract looking even sometimes you might want to paint so that it's very finely detailed and more of a like I'm not going for like a botanical painting so much I want to go have fun and throw those paints on there and those bright colors and those little highlights which is great fun but you can't do it too soon you have to get your really your pumpkin in there first and then you can have fun playing with those um, little techniques after so we're just getting there with just a basic pumpkin and I'm going to just mix a few different shades up now. So I might take the yellow that I was just in and maybe take a little white into that. So I get it a little lighter. And I know I want it a little lighter on the edges. So I'm going to just put that on. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit too. Because I want to be able to have some of the colors just popped on. Not um, running together so much sometimes. If you are ever painting and you need to get things to dry a little quicker. You can simply use a heat gun or your hair dryer. Now, can you see I'm taking strokes up and down now. It gives a little texture to the pumpkin that I like. Um, 
I'm using, actually I'm using a hog bristle brush here. It's a filbert. It's really not the, in the best shape, so it doesn't get a little fine line. I love my flat brushes when I need a fine line, but I want more of a rough look. And these hog br bristle brushes really move your paint around well for you, especially if you're on a canvas with some texture. So I do like those brushes um, to paint with. So I'm going to get a little darker now in my little, little, uh, the little crevices. I want to get, like I said, more on the alizarin, red side, but dark enough. And I'm just using my dirty brush again, and I'm gonna add a little Payne's Gray in there um, as well to get it a little deeper. And I'm going to just go in there. You can see I'm sort of following what I had, right? Just wanna deepen it up a little right against that edge, right against the dark edge. I want it to be a little darker. So it is a bit of a push and pull. I do go back and forth a little bit. Drying off my brush now. I don't want any more paint on there. Really just kind of dry it off. I just will, I will just wipe it on a paper towel. I have usually a paper towel in my hand there. And I just want to, where I smudged it to begin with, I just want to blend a little more in that, that same way. I'm picking up a lot of that dark as I'm kind of softening it here. So as I do, that's when I just offload it onto my paper towel. And I did like a little dark down here. And like I said, I like that up and down. I sort of do use it on the chisel edge a bit, but it's not going to be a fine line. I don't want a fine line. I just want it kind of smudgy. And I'm just going to bring some of that dark here and there up and down. Because I just want different shades. I want it to be interesting to look at, but yet I want it to still look like a pumpkin. I've got some nice reference photos. There's some great places you can get some reference photos from online royalty free that you don't really have to worry about um, the copywriting and all that one i use is up up unsplash and pixabay you can go on there and search some of the uh photos you can search by pumpkin or whatever you wish you get some beautiful photos you get the photographer's name you can certainly and it is a nice practice is to uh, mention them and you're you know you're showing your painting or something there's also a couple of great Facebook pages, uh, free reference photos for artists, a couple different ones on Facebook where photographers and artists share their photos and their paintings. And so look those up if you're looking for some inspiration. But right now, if you just go to any garden center, you're gonna get some fabulous pictures. So I think it's already coming along. I keep stepping back. You have to step back. Don't look at your painting from here and say, oh my God, look, it's awful, because nobody sees it from there. You step back four or five feet or take a break from it, and then you'll see what it needs. Put, show it, I take a photo of it, put it in the mirror. You can really kind of see what is going on. So I'm gonna just play around now. I see that my lines are a little harsh because I did just darken them. So I'm gonna go with some of my orange and drag some of that out. And like I said, sometimes we have to stop and let it dry a little bit, which I think I'm going to do because I want to be able to go on now when the other, when the paint underneath is dry and really put on some bits of color, some highlights and whatnot. So I'm going to just put a little bit more yellow orange on here. You can see I'm following that shape of each section as I paint on there. If I think that the little harsh uh, divider there is a little much, I might just kind of lightly go over it with some of my lighter color. And now I'm gonna let that sit a minute. I'm gonna pop over here and show you how to do a different color. Same premise, same darks and lights. So, hey, good morning, Lois. Thanks for watching. So let's let that sit and dry a bit. It looks like a pumpkin. It could almost be done, but wait till you see if we add that extra little bit of oomph and sparkle and some nice light shadows. I mean, some nice light highlights. All right, so, so let me know what you guys are painting. Who's a painter here? What are you painting? What medium do you like to paint in? I like uh, I like all the mediums. I was originally an oil painter. I'm sort of fitting my um, acrylic, trying to make my acrylics act a little like oil paints. That's why I know I work, work a little quick sometimes, but it's so that I can blend. You can always watch the video replay and slow it down and stop and start it. Hey, Rose, good morning. Thank you for popping in. It's nice to see you. Um, so, oh, and watercolor. I'm going to do some watercolor pumpkins. I'm itching to get back into watercolor. I do a little watercolor. I do uh, watercolor house portraits and different paintings. And I think I want to incorporate that, a little bit of watercolor into our art membership. Next month, um, we are doing a little bit. I'm going to show everyone my process for doing my watercolor house portraits. I have a little method that I use. And they're wonderful for gifts or if you sell your art 
or if you want to, you know, market your art, like I know realtors, I sell to realtors a lot. They love to give those little por portraits to their uh, buyers. So if you're looking for a little side hustle, that is always a good one too. Okay, so let's do something with like one of the bluer pumpkins. Um, and my phthalo green is a fabulous color to do that with. So I'm going to take a little phthalo green, a little, maybe a little phthalo blue, some Payne's gray. I want a dark shade, just like we started with over here. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in and get those lines. That sort of maps out the painting for us a little bit, too. It gives us some place to start. That's a little blue-green. I'm going to darken that up a little bit. Now, here is a little tip. I need it. It's a little too bright. I need to darken it a little bit, dull it down a little bit. Like I said, if you have some dull bits in your painting to start and you get on with those highlights and the brighter colors, they can pop. If you start very bright, how high can you go? You want to start kind of dull. If you want to dull down one of your colors, I take a little touch of the opposite or the, you know, the, the, uh, opposite color that you're working with. So I'm working with a green here, say. I'm taking a little alizarin crimson, pop it into my green and it dulls it down. I'll do that with, if I'm painting a green, like a landscape, it's so easy to get that beautiful emerald green, but it doesn't look so natural. You need to have it a little more earthy. So I always add some red to my green and I dull it down and start very dull. And then I brighten it up with yellows and green afterwards. So that's just a little tip there. Um, the complementary color you can mix with your color to just dull it a bit. So I've done the same thing. I've put in those lines, right? I'm gonna wipe off my brush and I'm gonna sort of smudge them. The, the middle one, I'm gonna smudge away from it so it's not, I want it to be bright on this edge so I'm not going to bring that color in. I'm bringing it over to the side section here, this little section. And same with these, I'm going back with them, leaving the front edge clean so I can put a nice highlight there. And then I've got a couple in the back. And like I said, you might want a little bit of a smudge around your stem, maybe around the bottom a bit. And there we are. I'm going to dry that brush off and I'm going to go right into the lighter color. And let's see, I've got some reference colors here of all different colored uh, pumpkins. Pumpkins. Okay, so I'm going to get a little light. I'm going to use white on this because it's. I want to see if I can get that color I have in my mind. It's kind of like, you know, like a tealy, but a steely blue. Again, I tend to, I like to paint with color, especially at the end, but I tend to go a little brighter and, and, and push it a little more. If it's like a dull blue, I'll go a little brighter or, or same, same with a teal. I love to get teals into those blues. But when I put my first swatch of color down here, it was just too close to my shadow. So I needed to add more white to that mixture, a little more green. It's a little bright and too minty, so I'm going to just grab a tiny bit of red or alizarin and just dull that down a little bit. Okay, so I'm getting that little bit lighter shade, which I think I'm going to have to really deepen these crevices maybe afterwards with a little bit more paint gray to get it a little more, uh, I don't want to say black, I don't like to use black, but a little bit more dark gray, dark blue gray. I know that these outside edges are going to be light at, at the end, so I don't want to get any dark there. I'm just, again, trying to fill in the colors, um, covering the white of the canvas. I'm going to dry off my brush and maybe add a little white to that here and there. Maybe along the edge where I know this is going to be a little whiter. You can use this for any color. So if you want a green pumpkin, <clears throat> a different shade of orange, it will work. Just get your darks in. Do your little sketch. It's very easy, like I said. Get your darks in. I'm going to get a little more white paint here. I should have known I'll be using a lot of white, so I will pop that on my can, my palette there. I know it's a little hard to see. I really like to have you see my palette too, but it's kind of hard. Like I said, on this format where I go live, when I do my recordings in my classes, it is a two camera set it's directly down at what I'm painting. Nice close up views but I just like to go on live here a little bit, introduce myself to new friends. I love to paint and it's so much fun to paint with people. So thank you guys for popping in and indulging me in my love of painting. So that's already coming along. It's very blue. 
It's very blue. I don't mind it. I like the teal. The whole teal uh, thing is, uh, I just love painting in teal for this last year. And it's just been, I don't know. I don't know what possessed me, but I like it. Pastels. I'm not a pastel girl, but I love painting with them. And if, like, I like it blue and teal. But if this was too blue for you, say, I'm going to dry my brush off. I'm going to go more into my more into my um, phthalo green. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of yellow so it gets a little bit brighter. A little white because I don't want to have a huge jump. I'm going to take a little red to dull it down. Dry it, most of it off. And I could stroke in a little of that green if I really want to get more of the actual blue-green of the, some of those pumpkins that you see. I'm not going to paint everywhere, but if I throw little bits of it here and there, now you see it has... A little bit more of a natural green looking on there. I may uh, tuck in just a little bit of those darks again then let it dry and let's go back to this pumpkin because this is very uh, getting drier and we can throw in some nice highlights and you'll just love the way that 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 looks. Love watching your paint. Thank you. And mixing color. Yes I, I, I will uh, tell you what I use. I will tell you what you can get by mixing what colors you might have. I am. I do the same thing, you guys. I go in and I see all the craft paints and all the colors, and they're so amazingly beautiful, and I love them and I buy them. Um, but you don't have to. So that's what I like to show you how you can mix them. Um, sometimes, it, like I said, it gets can get overwhelming and it can get um, a little dangerous if you start saying, "Oh, but wait, you know what? I have a purple over here. I want to add that." Oh, wait, I got this other color. Your painting will look a little disjointed. You want it to. Ha you want to have some cohesiveness to it. So I'm just going in and getting a little more into the crevices here. I can always tone them down later by little highlights with my brush. And I might stroke like I did some of the dark here and there on that pumpkin. I just like to go, your eyes traveling through the painting, I wanted to go a little dark area, a little light area, oh, a little surprise of color, a little color I didn't expect, rather than just a, like a true, true pumpkin that someone will say, Oh, that looks just like a photograph. And that's not really a compliment. <laughs> I know people think it is like, oh, I want it to look just like that. And that's fine if you paint that way. And, and that's wonderful. But I want it to look like a painting that I had fun doing this with the paintbrush. You know, Deb, you're right. I, this is just a little sample, but you're right. It does. Um, it is kind of cool. And uh, and I do like that. And you know why that looks good? Um, you um, Let's go back to the orange pumpkin now. It doesn't need a whole lot, but I think if we put some nice bright yellows on uh, for some of the highlights. And also, I have uh, a primary yellow here that I love. It's a very uh, uh, true yellow. It makes a great glaze. And what I mean the glaze is I just take the paint and run it over some of the pumpkin. Um, and you, it's barely there, but it brightens up. So if this is dry, I can go right over. And let's see if you can see the difference. I'm just going to do a little glaze of yellow right on top of that front section. I didn't paint yellow so that it shows up like our highlight, but it gives it a little glow. I mightn't do it on the whole section like that. I just wanted you to be able to see it. But I might hit my pumpkin in a few places. Like I said, it's very translucent. It's just a glaze. Now I'm going to take that yellow and I'm going to mix it with a some white and get a nice bright, uh, uh, a brighter yellow to give a few little highlights. So highlights would be like on the front of the pumpkin here, maybe maybe the highlight would be right here because say the light is coming from up above. It would definitely be on your ridge edges. And it, this is how I work. I've taken a little yellow and a little white. I put it on, it's like, mm, it's not bright enough. Then I just add a little more white. I, I'm always mixing on here and trying it and seeing how it looks. So on the back here, it might be a little brighter on the edge. I want it brighter on the edge of these sections. And what makes it really pop is you're putting a bright right next to a dark. And as I go, I grab a little white, I grab a little yellow. What's nice about that is every time I go on, it's not the same shade. I don't want to mix a big pile of yellow highlight color up and use it. I want it to vary. I want it to be different. It will be more natural that way. I'm kind of rough on my edge here when I painted it in, but I'm just, this is just a little sample. So anyway. 
So I'm just putting the color in here, just the way, just eyeballing, like, oh, I'm not even looking at my reference right now. I'm just eyeballing it. If I've got too much yellow, then I'll just, hey, hey, Charlotte, thanks for watching. I will pop into my orange back and forth, and I could put more in. That's a little bit more red. I just have fun just with, can you see I'm still doing those strokes up and down, though, too, right? Just up and down like this still. And a couple tiny little bright, bright highlights. Not too much. You don't want to overdo it. But I am washing my brush out now because I want to go with some white and yellow. I want it to be really um, bright and stand up. If It's a little wet, so it may still um, not be as bright as I like. But I'll come back. I'll go back and forth on these guys. So I am using mostly white, a tiny little touch of yellow. But I'm going to take a tiny red in there because I want it really an orangey highlight not just a cold yellow i'm warming it up a little bit it's almost going to be like a creamier color so let me just get a see if that's going to be bright enough i'm using up every spot on my palette here which i do i make a kind of a big mess sometimes okay so yeah this is going to just blend in a little bit so i think we're going to wait and just put the last few touches in after this one and if you want I could quickly show you the stems and some leaves too. the the stems are so much fun to paint and I know I've been maybe going on longer than I expected for a live and like I said if you can't stick around you know you can find the recording so I'm going to do a few more little highlights on my blue pumpkin here which I think is pretty much almost good to go like this but let's get a little bit of light here I could almost go with almost white. If it's a little wet still, it's going to drag that teal in. I can almost use almost white. And again, it's just the outside edges of the bumpy area. But I just want to go back and make sure that's there. I like it a little brighter up there where the sun, like I said, the light might be hitting it. And the, because these brushes, these hog bristles in there worn out, they give me some nice texture sometimes. I don't want a nice smooth look. I almost want a rough uh, textured stroke. And these brushes, they're kind of splayed and you can see it's put in color where maybe I didn't want it, but I like the way it works. Get a little light on that edge. And I'm working fast. It's a little wet underneath, which is good because that's allowing me to blend. And it just the more you practice, the more you get the the, the hang of it like anything don't be a little don't be so hard on yourself sometimes when you're doing this sort of thing it's not going to be like you know a Picasso when you're done sometimes it's just a learning experience so everything you do don't think oh this didn't come out good I wasted all my time it's a learn it, it's a lesson if nothing else and if you enjoy the time you're doing it that's what it's all about we're not here about every single the result of everything now I looking at this looking at this close while I'm painting it looks okay when I'm looking at it here I see nothing but a, an outline here and I don't like that little dark in the middle so that's why stepping back or, or looking at it in the mirror or taking a photo so I just want to go in with this color from the middle and spread it out a tiny bit I just want that look more than that solid shapes you can go with any of the colors now that you have in that pumpkin. Sometimes I just grab them and just put a little touch here and there. And again, a couple of bright highlights when that dries. So let me go into stems because I'm letting this dry still. That yellow is a little wet. Stems I just put in as a dark, a dark green. You can do a dark brownish, but I tend to want color, so I usually go for a dark green. I'm going to go over to now a flat brush, just a synthetic flat brush. Um, and because I can use the heavy flat end for a wide stroke and then I can get a thin stroke. So I'm gonna mix up just a dark green. I'm taking my phthalo green, a little burnt sea, burnt umber, a little bit of Payne's gray. I just want a dark green and I sort of just give that shape of that pumpkin around the little sections. I'm gonna, I have a white space here, so I'm gonna bring it back. So I filled it in kind of with the brush on the flat edge and when I get up to this stem here, I can press my brush and have it flat. Actually, my sketch goes over here. So let's see if I can make a corner with that stem. So I'm my brush is flat. I kind of press, press. But see how I can lift and kind of almost turn my brush to the chisel edge if I want to get it thick or thin? 
which is really fun. I'm going to do the same color stem for both of these guys. So I just kind of follow the shape here. A little darker on this guy. I added a little more Payne's Gray. And I'm following the little crevices. So see how it makes it look more realistic? I'm following, putting those little points of the stem into those little sections. And then I'm just pressing my brush. I wiggle it because I want a kind of a crazy stem. And at the end, I want like a little uh, teardrop shape like this that will look like the end of it. See, I put that little drop shape on the end. And now the fun part begins. You just dry this brush off. I wanna get kind of a brighter green, phthalo green, and your uh, cadmium or primary yellow make a beautiful, the emerald green I was talking about, but on the stem it works. You wouldn't wanna do your whole lawn in this green color, because this is the color that, if I'm doing a landscape, and you see a lot of paintings, and this is the color of the, grass it's just too bright i take a little tiny bit of red and i dull it a bit and then you can bring this on top and it really does look more natural then hey dolores thank you for watching it's nice to see all you guys this morning on the spur of the moment i it's hard for me to plan sometimes so i sorry i only give you like a few minutes notice um but if you want to be notified when i go live um Send me, a, leave it in the comments and I can uh, message you uh, a link and you can sign up for my email list. So, oh, and here I am talking and not paying attention. I went into my dark again. Let me get my light green. And I'm going to use my brush just on the chisel edge. I'm going to just run my strokes along. Can you see on this painting how I've just done different colors for the stems and I've just now taken within the chisel edge of my brush and I'm going to just run it up and just almost like I'm making little stripes on top of that dark. If it doesn't show, it's not showing great amount because it is very wet, but that's okay. I'd rather start a little subtle like this and then we can get it brighter. I can almost press a little pressure on my brush here. It's a little thicker and then it gets thinner as it goes up the stem. Hey D, I saw that you were watching too. And hey Dale, welcome. I don't know if it's really gonna show much in this light. It will as I get brighter. So let me just get one more little, I just press a little bit and then just chisel edge. So when I'm on my chisel edge like that, my look at how thin I can get a I can get a nice thin line. So with that light, I'm just gonna have it a little heavier towards the pumpkin and up here it's you know those stems have like ridges, so this kind of emulates that. And now I'm just going to keep drying off my brush and adding a little more yellow and a little more white, getting a little brighter. So you can see I started dark and dull, got a middle tone in, and now I'll get a really bright in, let it dry, and if I need to, I can hit it with some brights here and there too. So let's just see. And I I don't mind doing it when it's a little wet because it's it's not a harsh line that like you painted it with a liner it's blending a bit and that helps it looks more nat look more natural and then at the end i kind of just do a little bit of shape like that let me do both of them and then we can go and and, and kind of lay in the leaves a little bit so when i'm doing this second little um second uh, row say of lines i'm not looking at where the first set of lines are. I'm not being careful and saying, oh, I gotta go in between. I'm laying it right on top, wherever it may land. It will mix with some of the base color. It will mix with some of the middle tone. That's all right. It might be able to be a little more seen there when I put that light on. You can go with light yellow. You can do whatever you want. I'm leaving that as is for now. I'm gonna base in my leaves because I really want these to dry. And all we do then is pop on some highlights and they're good to go. Hey, Christine, thank you guys for popping in. Like I said, I really love to paint. I'd love to, um, I'll show you some paintings we're doing afterwards in the membership. I do have an art membership and that's why I like to come on here and just get to know you and you can see how I paint and see if it's something that, that works with you. I go very step by step. I welcome absolute beginners. I have many people who have never painted before or rarely have painted. It's not um, something that you can't learn. You don't have to be born with a, a brush in your hand and knowing how to paint straight lines. Honestly, if you have the desire and you want to learn to paint, you can. So I'm here to show you if you like the way I paint, 
Um, I'd love to have you paint with me. So I'm just taking a mid-tone green here. It's a little bit more like an earth green. You could do almost anything. I, I might go a little darker even. Let me get a little more of my dark in here. Because I like to, to vary them too. So let's just make this one dark. Now, so these leaves are shaped like, the pumpkin leaves are kind of like, almost like they're a little pointed. They kind of come out. This one is a weird shape now. But usually it would be like, I go longer with the edge here and then kind of two little points coming out from the side. This one got weird, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's just a leaf and none of them are perfect. Let's connect it there. Let's make a darker leaf coming out behind here. So since this one is coming out behind, it will be darker and less uh, detail. But at least we got those on. I'm gonna fix that shape because it just kind of looks like a hand to me. And so let's get some more little, little points in that kind of, yeah, that's a better look. And I want it to dry a little bit before I go on there with some lights and some more darks. I get a little bit of straight paint gray behind here because this little leaf behind is going to be very dark. So there we are. All right. Now, this is pretty dry, pretty dry. Hardly anything. They could be done, but let's just give them just a little extra pop. I love to do that at the end. This is going to be a nice bright pop. Let me get a little, I don't know if I need more yellow. Let's just see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And again, I put on this color that I mix and it might just be too bright or not bright enough, but we don't really know. It's going to have a little bit bright. Oh yeah, that's good. Now we can't use this too much. We can't use that too much because then it, it takes away the little surprise that you're getting there with that. So I might just use it in a couple of places. Don't. It's so hard to stop. I am the same way. It's hard for me to stop. But again, you don't want it too much. I think that might be enough. And then one more. Oh. <laughs> but you'd get the idea. Can you see how if we use that everywhere, it wouldn't be special anymore? And then you can go in and add a little more dark if you like. I think that's dark enough, but I want to get, I like the idea of some reds in those little dark areas. So almost like the glaze we did of yellow, I'm going to try, if we just put a little watered down red on our brush, can I get a little glaze in there? Let's see how that looks. I do like a little, little peak of red sometimes. You see how I just scattered around a little bit? It is, it is, is nice little touch there. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Let's put some lights on our blue guy. And then we'll just go back. And I can quickly show you uh, where we would highlight the, the leaves. And then I'd like to add little curly cues sometimes. Just I don't know why, but I'll show them to you. So I'm going in with the, the lightest bit of the teal, almost white. Um, and let's see, what am I looking at here? Just, I have some pictures of these pumpkins, so. Uh, and, and I wouldn't even really need them so much because I'm gonna copy here probably. And once you've painted a few pumpkins, if you do them on a little, this is just canvas paper, which is great to paint on for practice, or I'm using it a lot because I don't have room to put all of my samples in my big stretched canvases. I've been doing them on canvas board or canvas paper, but they really are handy to practice on. And then you could make notes here of the colors you used, um, things you might want to try, inspiration ideas. I've always got a little sketchbook or something for my ideas. Let's see. See, again, I'm going to have to hold it up so that I can see what I think of that one. I think this should come down a little more, maybe, maybe along the side. And with very little light on my brush, I can almost streak it up and down if I wanted a little texture. See, if I just ride my brush along the top of that canvas, textured canvas, I get a nice texture. And there we have a blue pumpkin and an orange pumpkin. And all we need is a little bit of highlight maybe on our leaves. I'm not gonna put too much into them because I don't wanna take away from the pumpkin, but you would just get some lights on there too. So I might go with, where's my brush? There it is, a light yellow. Let's see if I've got, I've got some, I've got to have some white left. I put so much out. And I'm gonna just go a little lighter. Now, 
on you'd be on a background here of something so my light edges mightn't show much because of the white canvas but we're just painting this on so I would go maybe on the edge of the leaf more a little lighter some yellow some white even the, the trick is to have some lights and some darks some contrast values are, are, are very important if you have a photo or a reference photo and you're using and you really want to look at values you could print it out in black and white and just look at the values values are very important more important than your color choice honestly you could pick if you have the right shade of the greens here and the darks and the lights the right shade the dark and light it's going to work whether the particular green is correct so let's see let me take a look I'm not going to do much on those. I'm going to do a little light in the middle. Almost like where veins are. You could. I'm going to leave that dark one in the back. And maybe you could put a little vein in. I'm just going to use the same brush going into my darks. And with the chisel edge, you could use a fine brush or a liner brush too. But I just want to get just a little bit of a, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a vein. Sometimes if I put those in, and then I go a little lighter in the little sections, just a tiny bit. I'm not even blending a lot. I'm putting this lights in, I'm smooching it a tiny bit, but I'm not really worrying about it too much it, and as it dries it will show up more this is still a bit wet but I just put a little light in between those veins sometimes just to give it like the leaf some shape see how I'm just putting on brush strokes and leaving it I'm not really mixing it in too much that's when you can step back and if it needs to be a little bit uh, blended you can I think you don't need much that could be good enough I do take a, a fine brush or a just, just a fine brush, really thin down, kind of a brown or a, a neutral color here. Really thin down because when I do my detail work, I want my paint to be like ink. I don't want to be struggling with it. That's why you can't get a fine line a lot of times. It's not because you don't have a steady hand or you can't do it or you I can't make a lot fine line. Keep your paint really, really watery like ink. Light touch, practice, hardly touch the paper. And then I just, on pumpkins I do this. I kind of maybe make like some little curly cues because it just reminds me of those little stems, those little vines sometimes. You could wrap it around the stem. And you could have more leaves coming off too. That's kind of a, just two big blobby leaves. You might want more leaves. You could sort of, I'm the only one who can probably paint with a brush and then lose it right, right there. You could put some little, you know, leaves here and there that are sort of in the background, you know, just little leaves, shapes. They just looked a little bit by themselves there. I'm getting carried away with something that's just really a little demo piece. But anyways, what do you guys think? Hey Lisa, thank you for watching. Pretty basic techniques. You can use that for any color. So for instance, this one, which I did do a little more realistic looking, that's maybe why I'm not crazy about it. I think I'm gonna go now and maybe plop on some really bright colors. But can you see the different shades of pumpkins, but all done similar with just section it off, make your little bumpy ends and put in a middle tone and then get some highlights. Pretty simple. And that is my little pumpkin painting demo for today. But if you want to, oh, did you see what I painted the other day? Because I know people say, well, you paint anything. Yes, I painted all kinds of things. I painted, I, I, I go to the vintage and the thrift stores and find cool stuff to paint. Um, my ice skates I painted last year, people thought were cool. I painted gourds. I'm looking around at all my crazy things here. Thanks, Deb. I painted little um, acorns the other day. This was kind of crazy, to be honest. Um, but I saw them somewhere and I thought how fun they'd be to put in a little glass bowl for fall. Um, from what I understand, I didn't do it because I just wanted to get to painting. I shouldn't, um, but I guess you will collect your acorns and put them in the oven 
at 200 degrees for two hours to kill any little things that might be living in them. That kind of freaked me out. I just wanted to paint them, so they probably won't last. But And then I put a little gesso on them and then painted a color. And then, oh, I used my pos the Posca markers, which you guys are fabulous because they're a marker. So if you're doing detail work and whatnot, make sure your painting is very dry. But then these have paint right in the barrel. So it's not like a Sharpie where it's a flat black line. All colors, different t tip sizes. They even come in a brush tip. They're great for painting rocks and little doodads. So I did all of the decorative work on these um, with my Posca markers. And I have a video out there somewhere of it. So that was fun. Up next is, maybe later today, I have this, I, I, I should have taken a picture before. It was a silver plated creamer and pitcher you know the silver plate stuff you see all over the vintage shops these were two dollars so I sprayed a primer like a gray primer and then I put a couple coats of gesso and they would be very cute painted as pumpkins but I want to paint a little scene like I've been doing with the orange background and then the silhouette of the Halloween things so I've been making little sketches this is how I design things and I got these little sketches in my book so I going to do like a little haunted house and some witches um i think that will be fun so i'm gonna maybe record that or maybe i'll i don't know whether to do it live or not it might take a while but that's next up and so keep your eyes open it doesn't have to be a canvas it doesn't have to be paper or board which is fabulous but there's all kinds of things i should have pulled out i have an old um like that marbleware a speckled kind of a teapot um i've done funnels oil cans I have an old lunchbox over there, a uh, little kid's rocker, uh, sneakers. I did some vans recently. So, oh, thank you, Christine. They're really fun. You could probably go on Pinterest and find lots of ideas. And um, some people I know string them, which is cool. Uh, but they are fun. But just think outside the box a little bit. It's even hard for me still to go to the flea markets and the yard sales and think, oh, I could paint on that. So I love to see what you're painting too. So please, please share anything you'd like on your, my page that you're working on. It doesn't even have to be a, a painting. It could be a craft or whatever. I'd love to see what you're painting. This is a piece I did, you probably saw recently with the sunflowers, I was plein air painting. And so we just did that in the art membership. Um, we have this coming up, a uh, little Christmas design, which um, I think would be cool to personalize. You could put your name on the bottom there or your town or paint little iconic bits bits of your town in there you could use it as a Christmas card design it's more of an illustration but we do a little bit of everything in the membership we do we do lots of animals this one we're doing actually on Monday we're painting that uh, I'm thinking ahead to Christmas so we've got some Santa but we also have you know landscapes and we also have very simple paintings too they're not always this complicated but if they are you get a tracer and you get absolutely baby step by baby step um, lessons. So I would love to have you come and paint with me. And just if you have any interest, just put something in the comments about um, that membership and or send me a message and I will give you the uh, info and you can take a look. And there's no obligation. You can sign up to paint with me. Um, it's very reasonable. The one painting a month is $12 a month. You just get a recording every month, just, a re just one of the paintings from the previous month's membership. But the membership at 24 is, like I said, you get two live Zoom paintings with me and you get two recording sent out. It's a fabulous community. Never mind my painting. The community is wonderful. Um, we have a good time. And really, it's not a lot. It's like you would spend more at Starbucks in a week. Anyway, I'm not a salesperson. I want to paint. I want to design paintings. This stuff kind of, um, the, the, the trying to talk about the other stuff is not as easy, but I'd appreciate it if you want to give it a try. Like I said, you could sign up and join us for a month and then decide it's you, for you or not. So I'm going to let everybody get on with their day. I'm in Maine. It looks like it's sunny and it might be a beach day. And at this time of year, we don't know when the last beach day is. Plus we have the hurricane winds and storms coming this way on Saturday. So... I am so happy to paint with you guys. Thank you guys so much. And I will post the recording or you'll find it on my page. And please reach out with any questions or if you need a tracer. All right, bye.